Hello and good morning. Welcome to Sam Chats, the Singapore Art Museum's chat series, where we invite art professionals to have a conversation with us on their work and their other observations and reflections on the present. I am June Yap, the Curatorial Director at the Singapore Art Museum. And today we are privileged to have with us two curators, Samantha Yap and Shahida Iskandar, as well as my colleague from the National Gallery Singapore, Russell Storer, who co-hosts with me for a discussion on the exhibitions, Time Passes, and an exercise of meaning in a glitch season, both currently on show at the National Gallery Singapore. Our session today is on the Zoom platform, which uh, many may be familiar with by now. But as these platforms come with options, allow me to share some quick housekeeping matters. Please do note that we will be recording the session today. We'll also be taking questions from all of you at the end of the session. Microphones for audience members will be muted for the duration of the session. So you can submit your questions by clicking on the Q&A button on the bottom of the video screen. If you are viewing this on a mobile device, uh, the questions function can be found below this video. So for some background to this subject today, uh, the Singapore Art Museum and National Gallery Singapore recently launched an initiative responding to and referencing the earlier name of the virus, 2019 novel, novel uh, coronavirus. The broader project that is titled um, Proposals for Novel Ways of Being sees the museum's partner 10 other local art institutions and independent art spaces and collectives to present a series of exhibitions and programs, both physical and online, that feature the works of over 170 local artists and cultural workers. So the title Proposals for Novel Ways of Being is meant to recognize the critical situation we are experiencing, as well as to register hope in noting that COVID-19 is not the first pandemic or, for, or crisis the world has encountered, nor will it be the last. Here the curatorial and exhibitionary project suggests that new ways of being are possible, much needed, and also to be expected, uh, and where the aesthetic project might play a role. So, um, for the exhibitions on the National Gallery Singapore and the Singapore Art Museum, uh, the decision was made to engage independent curators, thus extending the museum's system and support beyond our own projects, even at the point of exhibition development. We are grateful that Samantha and Shahida agreed, agreed to come on board at uh, very short notice and with the challenge of the project's intentions and hopes. So now I'd quickly like to introduce my colleagues here. Um, okay. I'll begin with Russell Storer, who is uh, the Director of Curatorial and Collections at National Gallery Singapore, where he has co-curated exhibitions including Minimalism, Space, Light, Object, Between Worlds, Radhan Saleh and Juan Luna, and Yayo Yayoi Kusama, Life is the Heart of a Rainbow. He was previously Head of Asian and Pacific Art at Queensland Art Gallery, Gallery of Modern Art in Brisbane, Australia where he was on the curatorial team for the Asia Pacific Triennale. He was also the co-curator of the third Singapore Biennale in 2011. Next, we have Samantha Yap, who shuffles between writing, curation and project management. She's interested in forms of reciprocity, such as the ethics of care, love and vulnerability, as well as the exploration of feminist perspectives across writing and visual culture. Her recent exhibitions include What is the Current That presents a behaved waste at yours workshop, your workshop and at Second Sight at Coda Culture. Her writing is featured in the poetry anthology My Lot is a Sky alongside other exhibition catalogues. Finally, joining us too is Shahida Iskandar, who works with vernacular ideas of visuality within Southeast Asia, drawing on contemporary, practice, contemporary discourses on hypervisuality and its opposite, the unseen. Her projects aim to unpack knowledge that inform and counter hegemonic systems of seeing. Shahida was the inaugural Emerging Writers Fellow for the academic journal Southeast of Now, Directions in Contemporary and Modern Art in Asia, and a recipient of the Impart Awards 2020. Shahida was previously curatorial assistant at the NTU Center for Contemporary Art, Singapore. So a warm welcome to our panelists and co-host, and let us begin. So to start, we would like to open the floor to the curators to share briefly on their respective exhibitions. Uh, and here, uh, let me also then share, uh, sorry, uh, 
um, juggling <laughs> buttons here. Um, there we go. Okay, let me share. Okay, yes, and and so um, Samantha, please. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hi, everyone. I will take some time to um introduce time passes to you first, and then I'll let Shahida um also introduce her exhibition. So um, time passes is um an exhibition that's actually collectively produced over the past few months, and it's through the collective efforts of certain artists and myself, and it seeks to explore various modes of um, caring, living and relating as we navigate through the pandemic that is still to pass and the deficits that it will leave behind. So the exhibition title actually references um, the middle chapter in Virginia Woolf's um, novel To the Lighthouse, which captures a movement in time that bridges the narrative um, past and future. And so in, in some sense, I think the exhibition is conceived as this corridor of time that echoed the indeterminate passage of our days. And um, within the chapter itself, um, it actually details the decline of an old holiday house over a decade from a space of contact and interaction into one of quiet and disarray. And yet even amidst this decaying landscape as the house slowly disintegrates, you know, acts of care and attention still continue to grow and persist. And so at the end of the chapter, we have the cast of, um, of characters actually reuniting in the same house that has been um, thoroughly looked at and thoroughly looked after, made and remade through care. So I think um, this you know, twin acts of looking at something and looking after something is one of the core, is a, the core tenet of the exhibition. And um, the works in the exhibition um, manifest acts of caretaking through the handling of different materials, but also a commitment towards uncovering um, possibilities of living and relating even through difficulty and uncertainty. So um, I will not say so much about the exhibition and um, I, I encourage all of you to visit it, um, and I'll pass the time over to Shahida right now. Yeah. Thank you. Hi everyone, thanks for taking the time to um, come on board this webinar with all of us. So I'll just do a brief introduction of an exercise for me in Glitch Season. Um, so it's basically really a collaboration between myself and then other artists. Um, the exhibition looks at reassessing our state of being as individual and as collective during these challenging times. Um, as we all know, the pandemic has affected and disrupted global routines and made physical societal cracks of many existing issues that have been swept under the rug for a long time, such as the climate crisis and the ill effects of globalization. There are more conversations around some of these issues now as a result of the pandemic and as you know, we are in a glitch season that um, we're in, it's, it's, this is a time for all of us to reflect. Um, so in a way, like art for a long time has participated in these introspections of trusting our own intuitions. And this exhibition looks into recent practices that embody these processes of wanting to address the harder questions, the present state of things. Um, most of the works that are part of this exhibition were produced in the past year or was mostly expanded or produced within two months before the show opened. With the existing works, I want to show how they have taken, had, they have taken on new meaning because of its relevance in light of the pandemic and as premonitions of things to come or you know came from making space for new pathways of actions to giving agencies to other worlds to exist alongside ours to paradigm subversions of the everyday especially now with the, our current reality which um, can be seen as absurd at times the artists have mirrored the many forces the world is grappling with through this pandemic and even before that um, all of these issues were exhibited and you know what I would say was once a time bomb has in a way exploded this past couple of months. Uh, we hope that, you know, for me, it's through this exhibition, we can show how members of the visual arts community is trying to collectively make sense of our current state of mind and body. Yeah. So again, I'm going to like echo what Samantha said, please come to the exhibition. <laughs> So Jim, we... I, I have muted myself. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Samantha and, and Shahida, for sharing on the exhibitions quite quickly. Maybe we can unpack this, uh, your exhibitions, a little further. So uh, perhaps we can start with some uh, maybe immediate questions in relation to uh, the exhibition itself. Yeah. Um, perhaps to uh, speak then as a starting point, you know, how did you go about selecting uh, the the individual artists, you know, um, for your shows? Um, <clears throat> I think I'll, I, I'll start first and then I'll let um, Shahida jump in any time. So 
I think maybe in terms of how we, how I was was looking at the selection of artists, I think that um, there was also like a very conscious decision to work within um, my greater peer group. Also, I think, um, I mean, based on a few reasons, one being very practical and that the timeline that we had for this exhibition was about 2.5 to 3 months. So in some sense, because of the 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 quickness of everything, it kind of makes sense to be looking at conversations that we will be like reprising or continuing um, rather than I think it's, I, I I guess on, on some level, I didn't felt like we had enough time to be starting new conversations and that um, I wouldn't be able to see this conversation is true within that, that one month that we that we really have, you know, when you break down the whole timeline properly. And and so in some sense, I think, um, and I guess it's the same for Shahida as well, and she can comment later, but um, the artists that uh, are in time passes, I think all of them are um, artists that I admire greatly. And I think that some of them have worked very closely with but others I think I've sort of used the opportunity of the exhibition to get to know better but um, more or less I think um, one of the key things is that even though um, this exhibition is a kind of like pandemic response or pandemic commission um, to that continuity that I mentioned earlier was that to look at artists who are already practicing or whose work or practice were, were orbiting around the teens of care, teens of um, reciprocity that I was interested in or that the exhibition is premised in and, and to work with them so that they have a way of continuing their craft. And so I think that even even though, you know, we're going to respond to our current times, it's still a way of, of um, you know, manifesting a certain kind of care and continuity in a time of disruption. And I think um, the other thing I wanted to mention, mention was, of course, I think in terms of the demographic of the artists across Shahida and my exhibition, and, 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 it's, and it's very obvious that we were looking at a certain demographic of um, younger artists, or so-called even like emerging artists. And I think that there is a key reason for that. And it's not something that we would want to shy away from. In, in, a, in a sense that I think um, having the privilege of um, curating and organizing an exhibition for an institution and recognizing that kind of access doesn't always, it isn't always um, available. And how do we then share that kind of access or how do we um, collectively go about um, thinking how we can work with people who've, who've you know, probably only are able to start sharing in, 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 in an institution years later or, you know, midway in the practice. So I think, you know, in terms of artist practices and even curated practices, you know, to have an institutional project or to have an institu institutional show is often, um, it only often happens in a mid-level kind of mid-career, you know, stage of your life. But, you know, for, for us and for Shahida and myself, you know, we come into this rather rather in, in a rather like fresh way, in a rather different way. And so that, you know, in some sense, it, it kind of makes sense to continue working with our peers. So um, <laughs> Shahida, I'll pass the time over to you. Yeah. Uh, I think for most of the artists, like what Samantha has mentioned were, you know, were already my peers and I've worked with them in different capacities. Um, you know, some of them, each season really honestly has a lot of ideas and in which I was trying to show, um, what was happening within my own head space as well and what I was really interested in and most of the artists that I engage were already working with similar practice uh, premises in their practice. Um, uh, I think maybe we can show also a bit of the process, you know, like uh, I first, even though I first approached them within the first month or when we got this invitation also, you know, we, I also wanted the artists to decide on their own if this was a project that they wanted to take on because uh, especially, you know, to produce something or to, you know, make adaptations of existing works within three months in this current climate is, is, is going to be quite challenging also for them. And um, echo, echoing what Samantha said, you know, it helped also that she was um, on the other side and we both had discussions about our, our selection of artists as well because they were, you know, primarily there were overlaps in our artists in the beginning as well um, and, and that helped also to diversify our invitations on our, whose voices we wanted to include it as well in the space but you know there's only so much we can do as well um, and what was quite important for us also you know uh, the fact that this was a one-time exhibition is not something it's also an opportunity for us to seed practices rather than harvest them for a one-time show that was very important and that's what Samantha also said um, and you know, being in 
exhibiting in the largest institution, art institution in Singapore, which is the National Gallery. Um, me and Samantha also want to see how the younger voices um, could envision it themselves within that space as well, which, you know, most of the time it's, it shows recognized names um, and a space and a space like that is also quite intimidating. Um, so how we can, how they and we can envision it is also something of a process for all of us. Um, and that was an opportunity as well for me and Sam, yeah. Um, thank you. And yeah, I just want to reiterate um, how important it's been for us to invite you in and the artists in. Um, it's a, you know, the first time we've had an exhibition like this and the two shows are both um, side by side at the National Gallery. I just want to unpack a little bit more what you just said, Shahida, about working within a big institution or within a museum sort of structure and, and with those processes, uh, which obviously are very different to working with independent spaces. So how did you have to adapt your curatorial process or what are some of the things you learned or some of the challenges you had um, in that transition for both of you? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, maybe I, I guess I guess right now it'll be it'll be it'll be apt to actually bring up like this analogy that that has continuously come up in my conversations with Shahida and I think even some of the other artists in terms of trying to figure out you know that movement into into the national gallery space. So um, me and Shahida always sort of talked about it as though we're like moving into someone's house and it's like a very temporary kind of situation you know all the furniture like most of the furniture is there you know most of the walls are there you can't do much with it but it's still a house it's still a space it's still a kind of shelter and and i think um we were also talking about how funny it is in terms of like um like the if you unpack the layers there you know it it is funny i think at least for me um working with the singapore art museum what happens is that obviously the singapore art museum is renting a space from the national gallery and then i'm also like I'm like the sub visa like, of like the Singapore Art Museum. So there are a few levels of, I think, you know what this analogy brings up is, is this sense of like, there are layers and layers of negotiation that I think even if we anticipated, we still didn't really know, like we could sort of guess at it, but it still surprises us, I think when we're in a thick of it and going through, going through it layer by layer. And, and I think one of the biggest, um, or at least one of the changes, and I'll start first and then let Shahida continue, was this sense that, you know, the audience that we are um, curating the exhibition for or that is coming to see the exhibition has dramatically expanded. And, and in that expansion, you know, there are so many other concerns in terms of thinking about um, how, of whether or not, you know, artworks can stand for themselves in a, in a, in the gallery, you know, whether or not um, they would be, um, easy, whether, whether or not they'll be too precarious in the sense that they'll be easily um, touched or they'll be beckoning to be touched or they'll be, or, or they will like fall apart in the space. So there is like um, a sense that um, there is a greater responsibility, I think, like we are um, expected to, to, to I think realize this exhibition outside of a bubble, yeah, and and that um and that realization I think was was a bit daunting in the beginning, and even now I think when when I'm walking through the gallery, when I'm walking through the national gallery and seeing all the banners for both of the, the exhibitions, it's still like it's a it's a surprise at how public this is, yeah, Shahida. <laughs> Uh, I think also remember how we both um, wanted to have no artwork labels. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, yeah. that's something we had to negotiate with Russell and June. But I think when we, I think when the show opened, we really realized how broad the audience is. That you're really, um, you really don't expect the, the type of people that really comes. And that's the kind of experience that me and Samantha also, in a way, value because a lot of times with small, smaller shows or mid sized you know, uh, gallery showing. Um, most of the times, they are really your peers who are coming to support you and it's always continuously, in a way, they are the same group of people. So, it really made me think, so what do we, what, what do we say when we think about inclusive spaces and what it means to be inclusive? Um, and, um, of course, you know, uh, spaces, like institutional spaces like um, Singapore Arts Museum as well as National Gallery have the resources to do that and have the responsibility to, to, to negotiate with that as well. Yeah. That's something of a reflection that me and Smith had as well. 
Okay, so maybe I'd like to then pick up on, you know, this, the, the kind of message in a way, you know, you, now that you have a different kind of audience, right, which you perhaps at the beginning did not realize, but I think you did kind of into it, you know, given that the scale of the exhibition and its intentions, um, but perhaps the experience of it is, is still um, quite, uh, it's very different, right, and it's uh, quite exceptional. But uh, so I want to go back to the, the, curatorial premise, you know, that both of you brought to the table, which I, I think um, Russell and I, we really, and, and actually all the team, uh, working team behind uh, this larger initiative uh, were very, are very appreciative of, um, which is how you have approached the subject itself with a lot of sensitivity. So, I mean, in, in Samantha, you know, in Time Passes, you know, you talk about time and care. And I think what I draw from it is that care is also a process, right? Care is not something that happens at a moment. You know, care is something that needs time to, to um, unfold, right? And yet at the same time, you know, your, the way you framed it, it also spoke about a disruption, right, of this time. Uh, that we're in right now. And, and for Shahida, you know, with your um, reference to glitches, you know, you're, you're referring to the various kinds of crises that we see in the world today. So really pandemic and climate may be seen as uh, really uh, extending from an Anthropocene, right, um, um, situation. Um, and the idea also of, you know, what is its meaning for all of us. So I, I just wanted to then go to, uh, wanted to just ask both of you, uh, in the context of what you have curated and, you know, in, in um, how the artists have responded, is, are we looking at, uh, is the lens optimistic or perhaps is it more pessimistic? Uh, what is the mm -hmm. impact on the art scene, right? What did you observe in, in putting together the exhibition? What were the, um, how were artists, you know, affected uh, directly or indirectly? Mm, I think that um yeah, I think this question of, of you know of, of the kind of responses and like how positive or how hopeful like the artistic responses or the art or the works in the exhibition are did come up um to me in some of my conversations with, with my friends in terms of looking at the different works and you know the tone of voice that they're talking about. But I also kind of hesitate in terms of thinking about well I think I'm 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 usually of the camp of thinking about more reparative modes or more um in some sense more positive modes i guess if you put it that way i'm also a little bit hesitant in 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 putting a positive spin in this because i think after all we are still moving through the thick of a pandemic and 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 so much of 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 hope is is something that you continue to have to to find a way to nurture and then it's also diminished day by day because of the the situation that is around us and and how we are still you know, really going through this 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 particular moment in time, and then, and I think that my hesitance in terms of of really putting, you know, um, or really even using words like oh, it's it's hopeful or it's redemptive is to think that, um, you know, the it's not to to endow art with like this grand purpose, you know, of like being able to redeem like ourselves during this time, you know, and or, or to even be able to to rescue something that is as 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 necessary as care. So I think in some sense, you know, that, that is really um, a very, it's a necessary project, but it's also one that I think um, it needs to happen. A lot of other things need to happen alongside the art, you know, in order for that to happen. Like I think it can't just be the art only, it has to be movements outside in, in the world that we're living in and how that, that changes. So in some sense, I think, you know, what I'm trying to say is that I think art is, um, is, is a step but it's not an it's a process but it's not really capable of 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 getting the entirety of of that vision of you know care and a more hospitable reality that that um i was dreaming of la uh, yeah i think uh for me it's also thinking about you know when we think about history as well is we get to a certain point in 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 uh, in our historical milestone as 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 mankind or humankind is basically um we always forget that there are always one contributing factor there's always many contributing factors that goes um that goes through a change and i think what glitch season i tried to do was to show how all these issues um that in a way were already happening around the world even though they're not even they're not within um our locality 
there are ripple effects and you know they are also like uh, they also mirror into our undercurrents and that's something that we should you know try and think about and talk about as well but maybe just to share a bit also my curatorial strategy um in, they, for me as a metal, even though you we were working collaboratively, there was obviously a very huge difference in how we curate that. And uh, we both also discussed how a lot of it is also how I dealt with the mac macro and, you know, Samantha was dealing with the micro when she's dealing with strategies of care. And for me, so I was dealing with the bigger picture of, uh, you know, the many elephants in the room that we are not really addressing and we are confronting with. Um, so Greek season presented this many different ideas and how we, we talk about these discussions and how you know how I, I tried to make the exhibition a way that that um, in every corner you are confronted with something. Um, and I wanted people to experience in that sense on how we think about these confrontations. Do we really do we get do we get irritated? Do we get um, disjointed? Do we even absorb it? Do we want to actually ask the harder questions? And I think the whole experience I really wanted for Greek season was to feel um, the real glitch and how you take out, how you get out from the experience is completely up to you. Um, yeah, so sometimes, you know, we don't really pay attention and even if we do, we move on or we just put it at the back of our heads without doing anything really. Um, so that was what I really wanted. And also when people come in, also how me and Samantha, we wanted people to experience was to go to glitch season first and then go into time passes. Um, and in a way that also that 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 sense of contemplation from going from glitch season to time passes is also something that allows you to contemplate more deeply on what you think about the macro and the micro as well. Yeah. And and I think that I do it there. I mean, it was very clear to me working with you uh, is how it wasn't just in the content of work or the ideas that you're dealing with, but also in how you how you operate, you know, how you communicate. How you look after the artists and also the demands you place on the institution which i think is really important and obviously that's become very present um, during this COVID period you know the inequality that's become very visible um, around the world and how there's much more call on institutions to um, step up and you know um, acknowledge their own inequalities perhaps or you know how they can be much more active players in terms of social justice so I just wondered if you had reflections on that within the context here and um, within the experience of, I guess, not only your own shows, but within the broader art community about how these conversations could, could develop. Mm. <laughs> sorry. Think, uh, yeah, sorry. It's a, uh, like, I think uh, you, like my audience has been glitching a bit, so I've been trying to piece together like the, the parts where it's been glitching, trying to guess at what you were trying to say. So, I, uh, sorry, your question was about like the conversations that I think um, this, like, these two exhibitions are starting. Yeah, but um, also I think the, 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 I think this generation in particular and also what's been start, starting to really come up during this period are the, the demands on organisations or on institutions to yeah, um, be more reflective, to step up in terms of social justice. So just how you see that um, perhaps here, yeah, in Singapore. I think that, um, I feel like the, 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 the fact or the reality of, of that, you know, novel ways of being, being this, this um, initiative that's the first time of its of, of its doing you know and, and and these two big exhibitions being the first time in which you know so many um local younger artists are in the same are uh, sharing the gallery space and exhibiting there together say something about the the ways in which our institution spaces have certain kind of um walls up and that it's not the most open spaces to approach or to even you know get something started. So I, I mean I, I I guess just the very fact of of not being able to you know the uniqueness of our situation here and that you know you know if I had to play if I had to really think about it in a very blunt manner is that you know if we didn't quite have this pandemic and if you know things weren't changing with the gallery or Sam sort of sort of schedule we might not have novel ways of being and if we didn't have novel ways of being then I think we wouldn't have this sort of um, opportunity or platform to be thinking about, you know, and exhibitions or exhibitions like this. So, I guess you know what I'm in an indirect way. What I'm trying to say is that I do feel like, you know, an initiative like this shouldn't only just come out of um, out of a crisis. 
and that um, in many ways or the other, it's it's pointed us to a crisis that has always already been there, just maybe you know swept under the carpet for the longest time, and that what my hope is, and I think um, you know my own personal conversation with Shahida has also uncovered that is is the sense that we do hope that this is not the first time and then first and last time that we see shows like this or and where by shows like this I mean I think shows that are engaging with um, a different demographic of artists than what has been previously shown in the gallery or what has been in the collection and yeah I think the hope is that it doesn't it isn't the first time we see shows first or last time that we see we both see shows like this and that there will be a sense of continuity that you know that even as we are preaching about you know continuity and a disruption we don't want this initiative to just end off after after you know after Feb, after february yeah <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i think for me is so, so as much as you know this this um this project came out of in the middle of the pandemic i think one of the things that I uh, I really value was the the conversations with the artists, but also that opportunity to to think about how we can situate ourselves within these conversations. Like uh, as what you mentioned, like you have all these um, responsibilities that institutions have to take on, um, and one of it is of course the, the the question of decolonizing as well. Um, you know, decolonizing is a very big word, and is it is it also a buzzword? So, but I think what was uh, what was really great in that, that 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 step of going ahead and having that conversation within the institution was, for example, Noralia's uh, Skali Lagi, um, the fact that the gallery said, "Hey, you know, let's let's do another rendition uh, within the gallery space where Chomiyaki's painting is, where the um, where the exhibition premise is." I think that that's a you know a first step of going into that direction, which um, you know, all of us really appreciate, um, and you know, so in a way. Um, I hope it reveals to the audience that you know we are open to having that discussions within the on the ground and so on the institutional level. Um, also thinking about ELAs, uh, there can be no touching here, and then having that conversation of sexual assault and harm, harm and boundary on an institutional level because that kind of labor really comes from the ground. So to have to have a presence within an institution, you know, you you balance that out, and that's so important that conversation as well. Um, and and you know, for me and Samantha, so we were having this this uh, conversation with Eugene. Also, we were thinking about because um, Eugene was saying, "Oh, why not we have this conversation in the institution?" And it means, "Oh, we we would we never thought we could have the conversation because we always think that there's a wall with the institution." Um, I think for me and Samantha, it's also a matter of whether the institution wants to take on the label when the the, the work is shown, uh, especially a work that 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 is um, that is so. Um, you know, I would say uh, sensitive to, to talk about, you know, and, and, and I hope like in a way glitch season also uh, and time passes um, has uh, opens up that conversation which we are we're right now ready to have that dialogue and uh, also shows how ready the Singapore public is as well. Oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate your responses, actually. Yeah. Um, on, on young artists, um, I think some of them we have worked with at SAM uh, in our various platforms, um, simply because that's also uh, our remit. And I think we will continue to work with uh, many young artists in the future. So I think there's some, maybe there's some reassurance on that. But I think what we also really enjoyed with some of the other artists that uh, may not have been entirely in you know, our view, and so this has been a good opportunity to see uh, their practices through your eyes, through your curatorial framing. Um, on the subject of uh, decolonizing histories and in the institution itself as an edifice, right? I think, yeah, they were ab absolutely open to that. And <laughs> so it, it's, it's great that uh, you, you have also approached it, you know, and not simply assume that the institution uh, is closed, right? And, and in order to have some conversations, it is really a, a bit of a two-way street. Um, and in relation to that, I then wanted to ask, you know, whether you had during this time observed other practices elsewhere. So the, the shows that we are showing here are um, of works of local artists. The perspective is very much about uh, our current situation, our immediate situation, the circles we move around. But also wondering then, you know, in relation to um, other communities, you know, other um, places within the region or internationally, you know, if 
you might have had any observations of what else others are doing that you think um, might be something we should consider here. Um, I think, well, right off the top of my head, um, it's going like a little bit blank now, to be honest. But um, I mean, honestly, if we're on the topic of, you know, um, what has, you know, emerged or initiatives that has emerged during the pandemic, I would actually like to um, put some attention on like mutual aid efforts that have really doubled and that have, you know, people have been consistently putting into. And I think that um, this word mutual aid is something that has also come up in a lot of international circles with everything that's going around. And and so I think um, while I wouldn't say that I have been the most consistent participant in terms of mutual aid efforts, I think my time there and speaking to some of the people who are involved in it has has really deeply changed me in a sense that I feel um, it, it's precisely this kind of like ground up initiatives that need to be seeded more and more, and that you know they should and and in a way that allows for continuity so there isn't a kind of like pressure to you know quickly finish and quickly support everyone and then we're done you know it's like okay this is our like we, we have 10 projects to, to 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 support and then we're done there you know that kind of finality or that kind of durational extent but a support that continues on and on and that there is a a, a way uh, there's a strategy in which everyone is sort of taking turns because i think the work of caring for someone else and I think with this, I, I might go a little bit into what Alfred has actually mentioned in, in the chat about the limits of care. Is that um, when you're, when, I guess when we're talking about mutual aid and the kind of effort to really immerse ourselves into it, there is also, it's also important to recognize our limitations and what we can contribute. So a lot of times I think when I'm thinking about care, I'm also thinking a lot about compromise. And while they seem like sort of mutually exclusive things, um, I feel like it's important to think about them in tandem because when we're thinking about care or the ethics of care, it's not care as a kind of like ceaseless, unending kind of um, process and that you give, you know, and that you continually give. But it's also acknowledging your capacity for care and that if you are not capable of doing that, then you then you hold yourself back. So there is a certain kind of accountability in terms of your responsibility of taking care of another person and they take care of you as well. And then what I find most admirable in mutual aid efforts is the way in which, you know, different people step up and then you have a time to sort of, you know, come in and, and, and also take a break from that as well. So um, I feel like in some sense, um, when I was thinking about why focus on care, um, you know, seeing what has been done with the mutual aid efforts, especially also in Singapore, was, was really, um, was one of the impetus for me to be thinking about what continues to persist and what should persist in in a time of a, of of a, of a pandemic, and um, yeah, <laughs> I'll pass it on to Shahida now. Um, I'm really the woman, but um, I may have to echo with what Samantha also said. But if I do have a, an answer, I'll, I'll think about it because I'm still thinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess one of the other things is just the, the speed of organising a show like this. And obviously it's been very challenging logistically. Um, but do you think it's also, I mean, that quick response, I mean, has that also been interesting or offered a new way of thinking about things or different kinds of, I guess, curatorial approaches, um, you know, just how, how to work in a, in a different way? Sort of interest in that compression, I guess. Um, what it sort of brought forward, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I guess um, maybe to con maybe to answer this and bring up a little bit of what Shahida mentioned about um, our efforts when we were working with Ila on there can be no touching here, which is the artwork that's on view. Um, I would say that I think between us, you know, there is there was really a sense of you know, a surprise that we mentioned before that, oh, you know, the institution would be willing to, 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 to dialogue or to at least express some solidarity in terms of a subject like that. And, you know, our own surprise, the, reg the surprise that we've registered also speaks to a certain kind of belief that, or a certain kind of self-policing that we have, that we don't think that institutions are ready to take this on, or that we believe that institutions are closed walls or they're monoliths that we can't move. 
and so and so in in terms of working on this exhibit on these exhibitions, we are starting to realize that there are some parts that are movable that you know you can push and that you can open a window and have a dialogue and and I think it's the same thing you know in terms of thinking about or calibrating our approaches or strategies in terms of a a bigger audience or a wider audience is that um you know I think usually what happens is that when you're thinking about, oh, I need to curate for a wider audience, then that necessitates me, you know, trying to make myself a bit more um, understandable. And I think, you know, how one would usually approach this is to think about, oh, my curatorial premise cannot be so dense, you know, it cannot be so layered because it needs to be easily graspable. But I think in the process of, of, of working on this, the exhibitions that Shahida and I came up with um, are still relatively dense in the sense that, you know, if you ask us to do an introduction of the exhibition, it will still take us at least five minutes to go through, like, you know, the premise and to go through everything else. So in some sense, I think we are, there is a certain kind of fidelity to, to, to being able to embrace layers and, and references and, you know, disparate points of views, even within an institu institutional setup. And I think that that's something that, that, is, that I find quite refreshing. You know, I, I think that was one of the things that we, we were quite surprised that also in, in, in terms of like the flexibility and the openness that we were given to really pursue this curatorial premises. So I don't think there was ever a point in which we were told that, you know, they needed to be simplified and or that they needed to be made more understandable. And that made a lot of difference in terms of thinking about um, exhibitions that take time to unravel and the exhibitions that take time to to understand and I feel like the whole process of art it requires a lot of emotional patience even in the making of the work and then the setting up of the work and then later eventually the viewing and experiencing of the work um and Shahida you can like weigh in anytime if you want yeah um, yeah um, I think going back to the analogy of moving into someone's house um honestly speaking it was uh, you know, when I heard the news that Samantha was on the other end, it really helped. I mean, it's because we both we are both peers, and um, there is a sense of support also. So you know that neighborly support <laughs> between ourselves, um, and it's also I think we both were on the same boat also. But um, you know, the experience also tells us how much the line is also drawn between, especially when you're working in an institution. I hope I'm explaining it very well, but how the professional is much more deeper than the personal. So, um, because, uh, you know, a lot of our artists uh, within the shows are also our friends, but there are also some parts in which we feel me and Samantha didn't want to um, uh, offload it or, or, or make them um, see some of the um, challenges that we both had. So, it, it helped that me and Samantha were on the same board. And um, one of the things also, like, we think that institutions are not, um, you know, grappling with the pandemic, but I think we should highlight that there were a lot of challenges for me and Samantha as well, um, in light of the pandemic as well, because we both were, uh, we had to install like at least three weeks before, or three or a month before, um, and 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 the, the gallery was functioning in a split team, um, and you know you had these issues of manpower restrictions, so uh, it was it was it was hard to work around it as well, and you know supplies were cut because we, we couldn't get metal because they come from Malaysia, <laughs> so the borders were closed. So um, there were these challenges, you know, and um, it affected everyone. And I was explaining to June and Russell uh, with Samantha as well. It's like me and Sam were like just in front. You have all these group of people from different departments supporting you and if something messes up from our, our end everything just becomes a domino effect um yeah but it, you know it, it really shows the kind of challenges that we also went through it was not an easy exhibition to stage for both of us yeah yeah i, I think uh, we were very nicely surprised that both of you got along really well and i think we're very grateful that you did <laughs> it <helped> a lot <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but also that you are very open, you know, in discussing some of the concerns. And I think that is uh, something that perhaps also came out from the pandemic itself, you know, that when we feel very isolated, then these opportunities to uh, have these conversations become very precious. I think we, we treasure that in, in a different sort of way, you know, it takes on a different kind of value. I'm mindful of the time we have and I realize that we have a few questions and, I'm, and, and in, the questions also move us away from more broad um, responses to the, the project itself to more specific aspects. And I'm, I'm thinking perhaps, shall we address some of these? Yeah, I, I think you all can see the questions too, right? So we have a few questions that are directed to each of you. Uh, 
separately. Um, we have a question um, who is from an anonymous um, person, but uh, on the issues of um, within the exhibition, Shahida, um, what you put together on racism, poverty, consumerism, uh, comment on whether um, this was very conscious when you were curating it. Um, we also have uh, another question for Shahida um, from Alfian. Um, I'll, I'll just respond to the first part of it about tours. Yes, we are looking at uh, the usual kind of access um, programs that we have, and that would include tours, it would include um, online access, and also other kinds of uh, ways of uh, bridging you know, and understanding the artworks through uh, groups such as our docents and such. But maybe the second part of the, the question there um, on, actually it's to both of you actually, um, on the fringe, how does one define the fringe, you know, um, presumably, you know, beyond the institution's usual scope. Um, okay. I can answer so the I'm, first question. Sure, sure, question. So why don't we start with, yeah, why don't you start answering? Yeah, I could answer the anonymous attendee asking about racism, poverty and consumerism. Yes, um, I was very conscious. I mean, one of the conversations that me and Samantha uh, really, really struggled with also like, what does it mean to do an exhibition in the middle of the pandemic? Um, um, and also for us, so like how these are, you know, these are questions that, that, that we also wanted to, to bring out in an, in an institution and, and, and see, like, like, like we both mentioned also, how the institution can also bring, bring that dialogue to the public as well. Um, and, and, and these are all like conscious considerations on my end because I feel like um, how, how do we also think about that, that space being also very privileged and who has access to that kind of um, understanding of, of, of the kind of... Um, the, com the kind of content in which all the artworks were speaking about. Um, and for me, it was also not only just um, talking about these this, this, this conversations that have come up, but also how we, we can support the artists, you can see them instead of harvesting them for just a one-time show. Um, Yes, I agree. The art world is complicit. Um, and also there is that question of also sustainable strategies of the future. I mean, uh, one of the things that I tried to do during the exhibition, um, the, the one thing that we tried to do is retain the walls from the Singapore Binali um, within the exhibition. So, but a lot of times when I tried to have that conversation of sustainability, um, it's also really, really hard. Um, but I think it's but I think it's important that we have this dialogue now. Also, when we think about how we we, we do exhibition making, um, and you can see even like in the context of Sofian Sanzia's work, um, another wall, and that's exactly the kind of institutional critique also he's also talking about when we think about sustainability, um, and the facade of you know uh, the thing about about facades as well, and how we we don't actually have um, that conversation of thinking beyond the image, uh, the, the the facial image. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I think this is not something I could give a, a resolute, an absolute answer. I think this is a, a dialogue that we need to start have, uh, having now and, you know, to address it. And I hope in some ways that click season will try and start, uh, you know, show in a way that we are ready to have these conversations on an institutional level. I think um, maybe to, to add on a little bit, to the to to the to the comment, and I think that, um, yeah, I mean, I would honestly say, like, I don't have like a perfect answer to a very difficult question in terms of thinking about the like what Elfin mentioned about the kind of power consolidation that it happens when we're thinking about resource, you know, distribution. You know, what happens when when all this sort of effort gets obtained within an institution, and 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 how does and in that sense, how then do we define the fringe or the so-called independent? aspect of you know making and producing art and I think that um, what I can say is that um, a lot of times I think in, in Shahida my conversation is it's a certain kind of awareness that you know what we are doing will end up being um, somewhat complicit in this bigger machine of like power and the way that power is distributed and that you know we were also very conscious and um, concern about whether or not what we end up doing with the both exhibitions and, the, and that, you know, that brief where, so some context is that, you know, when we were making the exhibition, the brief was to have like 10 artists per exhibition. And I think that like we, we, we had like an extensive conversation about, you know, how, 
how problematic it is, even though it's a it's a good thing, right? Because you're thinking about, you know, distributing the funding to to produce work across ten artists. But then, you know, with that number, with that scale, when you read both exhibitions together, it becomes a kind of survey project that we also want to avoid. So one of the ways I think that we met, we tried to counter that was to talk a bit more about very specific thematic kind of responses rather than doing a very generalizing that kind of like this is what you know artists or like contem young contemporary artists are doing right now you know and that kind of generalizing image feeds back into certain ways in which the institutional the institution may or may not frame such practices and for us I think because we were focusing less on the less on like the, the this particular demographic than than in their practices i think we were trying to negotiate that and so but i mean i'm also of the of of of, of thinking about this initiative as a way in which we can try to open a window in the institution and how whether or not it sometimes or other it's like a project of whether we think our local institutions are they a monolith you know can we keep pushing against them can we keep opening them up you know is there a way in which you know their structure is actually modular are they you know unmovable things so that is um i think what the two exhibitions and our experiences you know both the artists and ourselves experiences is to is to really determine that you know what is where our institutions stand and how um the kind of support that they give you know does it end up being a kind of support that subsumes us all under this greater machine and so I would say that um, in some sense, we are also very thankful that, that there is always and consistently room for negotiation and conversation. So everything that, 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 that you know, that is, um, that is, that is an upright no, you know, is unpacked into, you know, something that it becomes a ground for conversation. And I think one of my only concerns, I think, about working within an institution is that, is that, is this sense of like, they are not, I don't, I, the thing is, I'm starting to realize it's not about a no, but it's always about like a long drawn yes. So that whole process, the journey to that yes, you know, to be able to get all the kind of approvals you need in order to get what, what you want to do, that kind of bureaucratic processes and having, you know, been through it, I think it's also just wondering whether or not, you know, we are in a position to, 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 to at least feedback about these processes and how sometimes unconducive they can be. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I've understand. I've, 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 um, I've addressed the full extent of your of your of your question now. But um, this is like a short answer. While I continue to reflect on it, yeah. Thank you. We we have got a few more questions that have popped up since. Um, There are some specific ones that you want to respond to them. Yeah. Actually, also, do you all have questions yourselves? <laughs> I guess, um, yeah, questions back to, to you and Raphael, right? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Or to each other. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, throughout the whole competition, Shahida and I have been, like, referencing each other and everything that we say. So, in some sense or the other, it's like we're very conscious of, like, everything that we've come to realize so that we've or the kind of knowledge that we've you know imparted from this is a knowledge that we sort of managed to gain because we were looking at this and reflecting on this together and in conversation and that is a really really precious thing so maybe just to go back about the whole idea of like um you know finding out that Shahida's on the other side of you know this, this project is um it's a sense that I think you know so far as a as a as a curator or you know the kind of work the kind of exhibitions that I've been doing, I feel like I place a lot of emphasis on this sense of like collaboration and consensus in the sense that, you know, it's always like a, a dialogue and it's always a process in which we're trying to figure each other out. So you always have a kind of um, other person to talk to and other person to figure it out. Whereas I think with these exhibitions, there can be a sense that it, is, um, it can be lonely because mainly because, not because the artists are not good, you know, interlocutor, interlocutors, but more of like, they are already stretched thin with like this timeline and we don't necessarily want to offload on them when we have something that we need to figure out or when we are trying to figure out strategies of realizing certain works or certain kind of positions. 
And so I think what happens is, is to be able to turn to each other, Shahida and myself, and to figure that out with each other. So that corridor that separates both of our exhibition, obviously it, it keeps us apart, but it also unites the two shows together. And I think that that's like a very important thing, you know, we have like a curious comrade in each other. <laughs> and, and, and it's also important because I think um, a show, it, it's also a, a, a clean acknowledgement, I think, on my side that a show like this cannot happen um, alone. And I, and I and it cannot happen in a silo and that it only happened because of the ease of access you know the kind of op windows that we we're all able to open even doors that we were able to open also and that having somebody else like Shahida on our side it's like we were able to establish our own support system because I think another thing about care in terms of preaching about care right now in this in this time is thinking about okay so suddenly there's this sort of influx of funding and opportunities for the arts and all these kind of projects that we are that we, that we need to do in a certain timeline now to get the funding that we need to do that that we're supposed to get. And so what happens with a lot of work in the arts is that you know in order to get your work done, you have to not take care of your body, and 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 that and that and that mode of working I think is still something that me and Shahida are still trying to grapple with because it's very quite clear that to to get and the artists ourselves and ourselves have let certain uh, physical health matters take a back seat. But to counter that, I think, would be to really establish or to recognise, not to establish, but to recognise and identify where our own support systems are. And I think that's necessary for, for creative practice, I think. Yeah. yeah. Shahida, did you want to add anything to that? I think, I mean, um, yeah. yeah, I think not really, but I, I would really love to hear you and Russell's like reflection of all these conversations that we've had and what it means also for both of you coming from an institution as well <laughs> and, you know, engaging external guest curators like us. Um, yeah. Russell, do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really interesting process for me. I mean, I started out working as an independent curator and doing working in artist-run spaces. So for me, it was wonderful to have some of the energy again. It was, you know, kind of nostalgic in a way. But uh, I think as coming from an institutional perspective, I mean, as I said, it's the first time we've done a project like this. And um, it did throw up a lot of challenges. I mean, the time frame was one and split teams and the logistics of it another but I think it's also this method of working you know very system driven working generally with artists who um, may not be present um, you know working with artworks rather than artists perhaps and I think it was a very valuable um, process in terms of how we negotiate how we can be more flexible how we can be more adaptable and what impact those processes can have on communication on on relationships with dialogue and you know what can how can we maybe make some shift um, I mean it's a it's a challenging building it's a challenging um, kind of environment in, in many ways but I think it's uh, you know it's it's it, it's only happens because of people so I think that's that's something that's on a number of levels we, we, uh, this has been a really important project to bring to light some of those um, some of those questions yeah. yeah. I, th I think I echo Russell, you know, it's, it's been, a, it's a very important project for all of us. Uh, it's helped to bring us all together, you know, and, and I think that's important. I think from the start, the, maybe just to, to share, uh, as much as we are, the interest is in showcasing artists and artworks, I think the greater purpose was uh, actually to, to show care for the community you know, for uh, during this time. And uh, in relation to working with uh, institutions and being independent, I think together with Russell, we, we both had, had our periods of independence. And I think we worked with a number of different types of institutions. And I must say that the different institutions work differently too. And sometimes it's interesting to see how different systems, you know, uh, uh, arise from different kinds of resources, uh, different sets of uh, policies and such and, you know, uh, and where they are even, yeah. Um, but I think it, it, what perhaps struck me about um, the project and what you have put together is really, you know, how do we start to think of this very exceptional period and how it might have changed things, maybe even permanently, right? And I, I think uh, it, it's in a way the exhibition um, running for much longer than 
the amount of time we had to prepare for it, which I think both of you also, you know, found very striking, right? Usually it's the other way around, you know, you spend more time preparing for the show and a shorter time showing up. And this is, in this case, um, the show runs for much longer. Is um, It provides us that space to continue to reflect on this. So I don't think it's over, you know, now that you've put up the exhibition, I think we're, um, in, in our conversations, we also talked about, you had talked about um, still processing, you know, what had happened. I think that will continue all the way through. Um, and, and then let's see where we are at when we close the exhibition. Maybe we'll have different kinds of insights by then, and maybe that will be important for us to register also. Yeah, and no, I think it really synthesizes a lot of conversations we're already starting to have about, you know, the role we can play in society and how we can be a much more open museum. Um, so I think this is a really significant step for us. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've kind of reached uh, the end of the time we're allotted. It's uh, 12.03. <laughs> I think we should be wrapping up then. Uh, so I was wondering if you, any of you have uh, last uh, comments that you'd like to make? Anything you want to say? Uh, Elfian has something to say. Thank you, Elfian. Your questions and comments have all been very encouraging. Yeah. Sorry, I locked up just now. I didn't mean to exit early. <laughs> it was my internet. <laughs> it's the glitch that happens. Do you all have any uh, anything else you want to add? Or shall we wrap up then? Uh, I just want to say I'm really sorry we couldn't answer all the questions, but you know, uh, feel free to like drop me a text on Facebook or something. Um, I'm happy to answer it directly. Um, yeah, I, I think some of you are anonymous attendee. Um, Afiana, so feel free. I can just like, have a chat with you separately or something. Um, yeah, I think I don't have anything else to say, but um, please you know, take the time. I mean, if you have seen the show, please go back again and 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 experience it um, based on what our discussions were uh, today. Um, and honestly speaking, like for for institutions like SAM and National Gallery, they take more than a year to prepare an exhibition, and for us, it's like <laughs> less than two months. So um, mm. really, for me, is um, going back to that question of what really. Um, uh, influences me like outside of Singapore and things like that. It it really was just something I came up with <laughs> really fast. Um, and and also for me it was was this 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 um this many confrontations that I've had in my head and trying to reconciliate as well. Um, and I and and I hope that you know for me putting it out there and it really shows how I it, I hope it in a way brings everyone to understand that all of us are, uh, are dealing with the same collective sentiments of asking these harder questions and we shouldn't be afraid to ask them anymore. And now that institutions are open to have that discussion, I think um, this is a, this is a you know, good time for us to, to, to exercise collective solidarity. Mm -hmm. Sam, do you have anything to add? Um, I'm just going to keep it very short because I'm really afraid that my audio gets glitched. Um, I think that it's uh like I think I want to emphasize like the, the the ability to continue. So, um, really the sense of you know us trying to see this this project and hopefully seeing you know there's some being being some continuity afterwards. And afterwards, I mean after February when we both install the exhibition and not necessarily continuing it's in continuing the legacy of our projects, but continuing the legacy of the spirit of what we were hoping to achieve or what the novel waste project was trying to achieve. So I think that is what I'm most curious about now. I think now that we're sort of in the midway and going towards the exhibition, just sort of letting the exhibition run on its own. And um, I think, uh, yeah, I also want to thank everyone for their time in the morning listening to us talk. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, Russell, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, I think, yeah, it's been yeah, great okay. to have, have this conversation. And, and yeah, thank you. yeah, I hope there'll be many more. Okay, so uh, with this then on behalf of Russell and myself at uh, Sam and National Gallery, uh, we'd we'll like to thank uh, our two curators, Samantha and Shahida, as well as all our audiences for joining us uh, in this lively conversation. We hope it has been insightful and for those who have not seen the exhibitions yet, uh, do drop by the National Gallery Singapore, where the exhibitions are showing through till 21st February 2021. So thanks again everyone and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.